Good morning and welcome to the Shared Lutheran Ministries of Fayette County. I'm Pastor Jill Vivera. I'm the interim pastor here at SLM. This morning, we are worshiping with you from St. John Lutheran Church in Warrington, Texas. And we have the privilege of having Mr. Harry Shelberg here to be our assisting. Um, today will be Holy Communion. And so at this time, I invite you to take, um, get some bread some form of bread and set it aside for that time when we have communion and some form of grape juice or wine and just have it ready for, for worship. We believe that just as Christ is present here at, at our table, that Christ is truly present at your table as well. Um, so here's what's going on this week. On Monday, July 17th, our care team meeting will be here at Warrington at 2 p.m. On Tuesday, July 18th, the Welka gathering will be at Reutersville at 10 a.m. On Thursday, July 20, 20th, the quilting um, ladies will be at Fayetteville at 10 a.m. On Saturday, July 22nd, the breakfast Bible study is at the Birkeland Party Barn at 8 a.m. And then next week, day camp is scheduled for July 24th to the 28th. Breakfast begins at 7.30, and then pickup is between 12 and 12.30. There are registration forms available at each congregation, and you can also call the Shared Lutheran Ministry Office for a form as well. Today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Let us begin our worship together with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. God's word to Israel's exile is as sure and effective as never-failing precipitation. Their return to the Holy Land in a new exodus is cheered on by singing mountains and by trees that clap their hands. And now the reading. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and succeed in the thing which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Word of life, word of God. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from Psalm 65. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is from Romans, the eighth chapter. There is no condemnation for those who live in Christ. God sent Christ to accomplish what the law was unable to do, condemn sin and free us from its death-dealing ways. The Spirit now empowers proper actions and values in our lives and gives us the promise of resurrected life. And now the reading. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is a death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you who are not in the flesh, you who are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal body, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, Word of life. 
Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. While the whole crowd stood on the beach, he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, or snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of the wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace and joy are yours from God our Creator and our Lord and risen Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Over the past month or so, Clarence and I have been hosting Shania our adopted daughter, while she works and performs at the Unity Theater in Burnham. Well, Shania, she also has a little one, Isla, who is almost eight months now, or eight months old now. And it has been fascinating and a joy to watch her grow and to learn along the way. Within this short period period of time, I have seen little Isla's fine motor skills improve and her ability to sit up on her own and eat improve immensely. Much of Isla's learning comes from repetition, I think, watching those around her. But there are times when she just gets things on her own. 
which makes me think about how we all learn. We all learn on different levels. I tend to be more of a visual learner, while others can hear something and pick it up right away. It is interesting to see the many different ways that we as humans learn and grow. There is a fairly new commercial out there that I love. It has a tagline, Jesus gets us. This is so true, especially in our lives of faith. He knows how we operate And he understands that we learn in different ways. And it is through this understanding that his teachings on faith, he knows how difficult they can be for us. And like a good teacher, he tries to reach people on their own level. Again, Jesus gets us. Today we have Jesus telling us a story through a parable. Parables, they are wonderful tools that Jesus uses because they are both thought-provoking and they help us learn as we think about them. Jesus uses parables or stories that have common images and actions that people can relate to, they can wrap their minds around them, and it is in this relating to that helps them to grasp what Jesus is teaching. The parable that we hear today is about planting seeds. It is a common image. Planting seeds, we as a farming community, we know a thing or two about seeds and how they grow. Perhaps that is what makes Jesus such a wonderful teacher and storyteller. He connects with us by using those things that we are very familiar with. Jesus also uses the image of different soils to teach about God's incredible love. When we think about these soil types that Jesus uses in this parable, it's natural for us to to sit there and try to wonder what type of soil we are. Is my heart good soil? Or is it rocky soil? I think that it's only natural for us to do this, to compare ourselves to those different types of soils. And I think it's okay for us to do it. But I have to wonder that in doing this, we miss out on an important part of this teaching. And that part is joy. So let's back up a little bit. How many of you have gardens or have had gardens? If you're like my husband, Clarence, you put a lot of time into planning and prepping your garden You design rows or mounds, and you are very intentional on where you plant your seeds, right? But did you notice that the sower in the parable did none of that? Jesus tells us that a sower went out to sow. Seeds were flung here and there and everywhere in joyful abandon. And then we are told about the different soils. The seed that fell on good soil brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen, Jesus says. Do you see the joy and the hope that this parable offers us today? If anyone needs a message of joy and hope, I think we do. You know, our nerves have been stressed out by trying to keep up with busy and chaotic schedules. And to add to the stress is the immense heat that we have been enduring. 
And then we have the systemic injustice and violence in our world. And we cannot forget the many changes that are happening in our own lives, world, and church. So yes, I believe that we need a message of joy. And joy is what Jesus brings us in this parable. So let's get back to the parable. You can picture the scene. This farmer is throwing out seeds of love everywhere, confident that there is more than enough to go around. I love this image of throwing seeds out in joyful abandon. It reminds me of taking a handful of glitter and throwing up in the air just to see where it might land. And Jesus talks about the different soil types. And I believe this story is not so much about what soil type our hearts are, but rather the story about the generosity of our God. God, the prolific sower, does not obsess about the condition of the fields. It's not stingy with the seed. But instead, God carelessly, carelessly cast it out everywhere on good soil and bad. Our God is not cautious or judgmental or even practical, but is just simply willing to reach into the seed bag of love for all eternity, covering the whole world with the fertile seed of God's love and truth. And that, my friends, that brings us pure joy. It was this good news of God's love and truth that Paul was trying to spread in his letter to the Romans. You know, the Romans, they were not much different than we are. Like many of us, they were trying to make sense of the hard times around them. They were desperately trying to figure out how to remain faithful when their world seemed to be falling in around them. And this is where Paul enters with the good news of God's love and truth. Paul sums up his take on the Christian faith, how we are all confused and perplexed by God's generous love for both the good and bad, calling us to extend that same love. Paul understood the Romans and our inability to fulfill this call and how often we fail and miss the mark. The good news that Paul pins to the Romans, the truth that has the power to transform lives, is this. Paul says, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? There is no condemnation. None. Nada. And why? And this is where the extravagance of Jesus' parable fits in. God's love for us in Christ is boundless, endless, and reckless. God loves us so much so that God forgives us. God restores us. And God is willing to welcome us no matter what. It is this truth of this boundless, endless, and reckless love of God that we need to hear today and every day. We need to hear it as we continue to struggle in our difficult days. We need this truth as we continue to struggle in sharing God's love with this community and the world, especially when we seem to come up short. There is an extravagance of God's love that freely flows with the gift of forgiveness, courage, and yes, joy. Jesus invites us to not only to live in this reckless love, but to also to share it 
with the same reckless generosity. I think that there are times that we have difficulties with this kind of generosity because we see and think through lenses of scarcity that we don't have enough. But here is the same. Here's the thing. Have you ever just let loose and done things without considering the cost? For those of you who have, well, you know the freedom and do you know the joy that it brings? My friends, in this time of scarcity, suffering, worry, and loss, the world needs this kind of generous love that Jesus brings to us. This world needs a sower who is lavish with seeds of love. The world needs a God who errs on the side of wastefulness. We need this kind of God, and this is the God that we have. When we begin to grasp the extravagance and the reckless recklessness of God's love for us and fully live into it, well, we begin to live that love out and share it in the same generous and reckless manner. Living in God's love, it is freeing. It is fun and it is life-giving. And this is what we need today. More importantly, this is what the world needs right now. Not too long ago, I came across a question that caught my attention. It asked, tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one, your one wild and precious life? What question this is? It holds power, and it definitely carries a punch. It's also one that brings us to imagination and requires a little dreaming on our part. Reflecting on our readings for today, I would like to switch this question around a bit and ask, what will you do with the extravagant and endless love that God gives you? Go ahead. Use your imagination, dream a little, and think of the many ways of answering the question. What will you do? It's a powerful question. One that will set you free. One that will lead you to great joy. What will you do with God's extravagant love for you? Amen. Oh
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is at this point of our service that we come before God with our offerings of praise and thanksgiving. I would just like to take a moment to say thank you to those of you who are listening and watching. We thank you for your continued support for Shared Lutheran Ministries. We thank you for all that you do for us. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal those who are sick, O God, especially Laddie, Dennis, Alan, Joyce, Lorelei, Janelda, and the family and friends of Sue and Jeannie. Guide healthcare workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The congregation may offer prayers aloud or silently at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And to your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is at this time I invite you to gather that form of bread and wine or juice as we continue with our Holy Communion. We remember that on the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which has been shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
And we join our voices with all of the faithful, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. Now if you will take that form of bread, this is the body of Christ that has been given for you. And now if you will take your cup of wine or juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now, may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.